Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Tech in 10 with Sin. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Z97X Super Overclock Force from Gigabyte. Now, this is Gigabyte's latest and greatest overclocking motherboard for the Z97 platform, which does support Haswell. Gigabyte has made some many improvements on this motherboard compared to the last Z87X OC, and I'm going to show you those improvements now. A lot of them are Gigabyte exclusive features, some of them have to do with new chipset. Um, but yeah, let's take a look. Uh, first, I'll go over the box a little bit. I've already taken everything out. Um, the inside panel is some nice, like, uh, overclocking uh, little shot of a uh, Z97X SOC being frozen with liquid nitrogen and all the condensation turning into ice. Looks pretty cool, right? And then the back of the box shows some features, which I will show more in depth uh, in the review, you know? So let's go over the accessories first. The accessory package is pretty complete. Uh, we can see that Gigabyte has given us manuals, CD, uh, there's also a new um, sticker to go along with it, um, little orange and blue Gigabyte sticker. We also have the I.O. panel, OC brace of course is included with uh, more accessories to make sure you can secure it well. Four SATA 6 gigabytes per second uh, cables, um, black and two in each one, and total of two are angled. Crossfire bridge, SLI bridge and of course the uh, voltage read point probes. So let's move on to the actual board. Now, here is the Z97X-SOC Force. Now this is one of Gigabyte's latest and greatest motherboards, meaning that it has all the features you could really ever want in an overclocking motherboard. And um, you want to see the old one? I'll show you the old one and I'll show you both of them side by side. So this is the old uh, z 87 x OC and this is its replacement, the SOC Force. Um, both of them eight CPU power phases. Uh, the new one has upgraded digital pulse width modulator. This is the IR3580 compared to the IR3563B. Uh, however, both of them use eight phases of IR3553, 40 amp power stages from IR. You can also notice some other differences. The back panel here is a little different than this one. OC ignition has been moved from the back panel on this one to interior here on the upgrade. We also have new uh, dip switches for the DIMMs as well as the PCIe, where this one only has for the PCIe. You see the postcode display is in between the 24 pin and the DIMMs here, but it's been moved to the top of the board right here. Um, they've also rearranged some of the OC um, features as well as added an extra read point, I think, for DDR VTT. Um, not only that, we also have a heatsink change. However, the color scheme has stayed the same. But there's also one other really cool change I want to show you uh, before I go into more hardware specs of things that have been changed. So first, we're going to flip over this board. And as you notice, there are no dim, um, no dim hole, I mean, no dim uh, protrusions. So the dim here is a uh, through-hole dim, meaning that the memory modules have uh, pins that go through the motherboard. Here, though, you see no such thing, because this board is one of the first boards I've ever seen to use an SMT, Service Mount Technology, memory dims. And this provides much better noise, it reduces the noise. For instance, let's say these are like little antennas, each one of them, they can pick up noise from the surroundings. Um, however, with SMT, you don't have those little tiny uh, pins sticking out, and so you reduce the noise, but you also increase the signal quality with this, as it's basically like soldered on the top of the motherboard. Um, shorter trace lengths, stuff like that uh, inside the PCB itself. Anything that you can do to increase memory overclocking on this platform is appreciated by all the overclockers. And Gigabyte has definitely done some definitely cool things moving from through-hole dims to SMT dims. I'm sure we'll see other manufacturers do this next round, but Gigabyte did this this round. Um, now going back to the boards. We can also see that the memory uh, VRM is a little different. Gigabyte has upgraded from a low RDS on to a uh, to uh, IR3550 for the memory um, dims. Uh, so power, you have two 40 amp power stages here instead of two phases made with low RDS on. Uh, still controlled by the same IR3570 controller here and here on the boards. Memory power is still in the same place as its PHC power in the same place. Um, another upgrades, Gigabyte's using a killer NIC here instead of an Intel um, 217V here, they're using an E2201 here. Not only that, they've also upgraded the audio codec and amp, so they've added a TINE5532, I believe, something like that, uh, amplifier here, where this one has no amplifier, and I think this is, I believe this is an ALC892, uh, which is upgraded to ALC1150 here. And they've also isolated the PCB on the new 
SOC Force, while that does not exist here. They've also changed the Super I.O. from an ITE 8728F to an ITE uh, 8620E. Um, they still have the Super, the EC on both of them, here and here. Uh, now the EC chip uh, provides um, hardware monitoring, but also special OC features. They've upgraded here from the, this is an 8970, and this is an 8971. Both of them have the EC BIOS. I'm sure this one is more current. They're using the same normal BIOSes, uh, 128 megabits. Um, and they got two of them here. I believe they moved the LEDs though here on this one. Uh, this board also has an HDD activity LED um, right here. So that if you're doing uh, PC mark stuff like that, you want to keep an eye on the HDD, but also SuperPi uh, benchmarks. It's good to know when the computer is writing to the drive. Um, so that little built-in LED saves you from having to install a module in case you don't have one or the LED for the modules, you know, because HD LED activity LED, LED is like comes through here. Fan control has also been changed. Since so they changed the Super I.O., they also added a few things. And you see these chips. One is here. Um, there's another one right here. And these are Nuviton, I think, um, NCT3941, something like that. I'm not really quite sure. But it's a little Nuviton IC, an 8-pin that gives individual fan control. And there are five of them. There's one here, here here, uh, there's one here, and I'm sure there's one around here, maybe for the four pin fan headers, you'll see them. Oh, here, okay. So you have five of them in total on this motherboard, where this one has none. So fan control should be maybe a little better. You can see the heatsink sizes have not changed to allow for larger CPU coolers, but also liquid nitrogen um, overclocking allows for, needs a lot of insulation. Most people take off the heat sinks, so this is easy to detach. Uh, what else did I want to go over? That's different. Oh, yes. Gigabyte has added an extra clock generator for base clock. Um, so this one just used fancy BIOS things where it um, messed with the platform controller hub to get higher base clock. But Gigabyte found that maybe it's a little easier for them to do this or easier for users to do it without all the long training of the base client of the PCH to, of the DMI to just uh, include it right here. Uh, there is a little extra IDT clock gen and this is just for base clock overclocking and uh, it should provide much better base clock, much easier to do too for everyone. Uh, they've also added DDR-VTT things. Uh, so DDR-VTT is now one of the voltage read points as is control in the BIOS also opened up. Now I'm going to go over, uh, I think I've gone over all that. PCIe layout is the same. So I'm going to move this board away. We've gone over the major differences and all the hardware upgrades. My favorite is the uh, base clock, clock gen as well as the SMT DIMMs. So SMT DIMMs, base clock, clock gen, none of those exist here. Uh, this should give you the same if not better fan control than this board. This also has better audio and better NIC than this board. Um, and uh, we also have dim dips disable switches here and then PCIe disable here. So PCIe disable is there but here you can actually disable different channels of the memory. Um, and that's a brand new feature and it's much harder to do than disable the dims. And that's why many manufacturers don't do it because it takes a lot of engineering to figure that out. So we'll go over some of the OC touch stuff because I feel like maybe we should go over that again because I know a lot of users like OC Touch a lot and let me give you a little look at what Gigabyte has done okay so let's see if we focus there okay so Gigabyte still has the uh, postcode it's facing outwards that way though but it's a little further from the uh, dim uh, between this area so if you're sitting down here you can easily see the postcode here Anyways, so you got the voltage read points, yeah, uh, restart, white button, and then you have settings lock, direct BIOS, and memory safe. Then you also have clear CMOS button here. These two switches are for dual BIOS disable, dual BIOS mechanism to go just a single BIOS mode, which means that you still have two BIOSes, but they're not connected and they don't check each other. Dual BIOS mode allows the backup and the main to check each other every time boot up, but that causes boot up delay. It takes makes boot up longer. Not only that, when you fail over clocking, it still has to check both the BIOSes. And so if you do like a base clock recovery, it's going to take a much longer time when uh, you have dual BIOS enabled. So you can disable that. Then you also have a selector switch, so you can select between main and backup BIOS. This is a trigger switch. It's been moved down a little bit, so it's easier to see and easier to distinguish because it's really hard unless you memorize what the buttons do um, to basically figure out which does which and trigger switch has been moved here trigger switch goes between high and low frequency uh, on the fly uh, direct to BIOS takes you in the BIOS automatically memsafe is gigabyte safety feature um, so if you think the memory is the issue memory settings you just press that and it'll go to fail safe memory that should work on any module then you also have settings lock which will bring back your best uh, your last best settings 
Okay, now to the actual big buttons. Power, minus multiplier, plus multiplier, uh, minus base clock, plus base clock. You also have a gear button, which changes between 1 megahertz and 0 0.1 megahertz increments on the base clock. You also have a turbo button right here. Turbo button will load a gigabyte uh, safe, well not safe, but it's overclocked, but a gigabyte predetermined overclock profile. I believe on the old one it went to 4.2 gigahertz. I mean, this is Haswell, same CPU, uh, so same UARC, everything like that. And you also have tag, which is the user set uh, OC button. So even if you clear the CMOS tag profile still saved, it'll be in the BIOS and you save it through the BIOS and tag will load that profile. So when I overclock, I set that and I only use tag to overclock. I don't even load my settings manually. I just load tag and then I change stuff if needed. OC ignition has been moved inside from the back panel. Um, I guess maybe to allow the back panel to have like more uh, video outputs in case people want to use those. Uh, so we'll go over the back panel next. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, PS2 is still there. Four USB 3.0. Now they have reduced the number of USB 3.0 on the board compared to the last one, but really overclockers don't care. We just want 2.0 because it's easier without driver installation, especially for XP and Vista. Because, I mean, Intel USB 3.0 is not supported on XP or Vista. Uh, then we have audio output 7.1 with SPDIF, the four uh, video outputs. I personally still use DSUB for my overclocking monitors, so uh, I, I just was testing the board out a little bit. We can go back to uh, PCIe layout, right? So PCIe layout, 16x slot, 4x slot, 8x slot, 4x slot. This 4x is hardwired 4.0 to the PCH and in 2.0 mode. Um, now 16x goes to this and switches can switch 16x to 8x8x or 844. So 88 or 844. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I think that's all I need to cover right now. Later on I give you a full review where I'll go over all the chips on the motherboard. But uh, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this little uh, overview and differences between the Z87 and Z97 OC Z97X Super Overclock Force motherboard. Join us again sometime soon.